<laughs> I'm a cyber guy, cyber security guy. So I, I, I learned my skills from uh, Rod. I'm going to throw that at him. <laughs> there you go. Uh, All right. Are we, are we ready to start with? There we go. All right. Enjoy, guys. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. So Nessus Essentials is a free product that we give out. Um, our founder and the person that basically invented this is uh, Renault. And Renault basically said, look, I want to give back to the community. We're going to put this out there and we're going to give it, you know, a certain limitation, but certain things he did not limit. And I've argued with him on that um, greatly about it. So a quick little sales pitch. Nessus Essentials is free. This limitation is 16 IP addresses can be scanned, uh, let's say, deeply. And um, you can discover any number of um, IP addresses you want. So discovery, we don't care about it in terms of limitations. But once you start using the plugins and such to go in and, and examine that device, that's where you have the limitation of 16. So the way uh, we do this, think of it like Nmap on steroids. Once we discover things, we want to say what is possibly vulnerable here. And so we have these things called plugins, which are basically snippets of code that are written in a language we created called NASL, N-A-S-L, which is basically a cut down version of C. When they invented this way back, they, that's what they used. And so they, they created these little plugins that will go do various tests. We have currently over, I think it's over 100,000 plugins today that we can run against things. Um, the key thing about plugins is what should be your focus should be what has come out in the last 30 days um, because that's what most of the bad guys are looking for. So the threat actors will see, okay, look, here's a new CVE. Let's see if they're vulnerable. Then I'm going to go after them. That's where they get most of their, their success. The older stuff, most people have patched and they're not as interested in it. As a matter of fact, on uh, patch Tuesday, when Microsoft puts out their patches, the next day you'll see a significant number of plugins that we create within 24 hours. And part of this in reviewing patches is last year we discovered over 100 zero-day exploits, not malware, zero-day exploits. And by just looking at what was patched, and figuring out different ways um, to effectively do the same thing. Somebody is not on mute, maybe Alan. Somebody's typing a lot. Okay, thank you. So what we can do is with all those plugins is very quickly tell you if there's other ways to accomplish this exploit. And now at least you know what's going on. Yes, you may not have a patch for it, but at the same time, uh, we can probably help you learn how to mitigate it. Because quite honestly, um, ne Tenable focuses a lot on uh, patching and such. But in reality, if you know, for those of you that are out in the real world, you know that I can't always patch uh, 250,000 endpoints. It doesn't happen. Even 100 endpoints, I may not be able to patch right away. How do I stop the threat? Well, normally I go to my firewall or IPS system, whatever and try to put something in there to help me block it from coming in. Needless to say, um, we give you all that information. So that's essential free. The number of plugins, and this is where I disagreed with, with Renault. I was saying, look, if you're giving it away for free, don't give them all the plugins. Um, you know, date them so that they, you know, they can use some of the, the, the current stuff, but up to like, you know, within the last 30, let's say 30 days and older is what I mean. Snort does that. Uh, if you get snort signatures, if you don't pay for them, they're giving you old snort signatures. But Renault said, nope, I promised the community that I wouldn't do that, and they're going to get all the plugins, and that's that, Eric. So I was overturned. Good for you. You're, you can get literally the latest and greatest information on vulnerabilities using Nessus Essentials. Limitation, 16 IP addresses. That's where you're going to get it. So prerequisites. Now, hardware, to, if you're going to do 16 IP addresses, big deal. Two CPUs, you know, basically two cores, four gig of memory is, is plenty, maybe 30 gigs of disk space. It all depends on what you're trying to do. Now, if you're using Nessus Pro or one of the other ones, you can go online here and get 
um, the, the requirements that we have so you can look at it and saying, hey, if I'm going to do this many IP addresses, what do I really need? We, all our stuff comes out using WinPCAP. We're actually in the process of changing that because WinPCAP is not being updated and we want to use NPCAP. What I want to tell you is I'm going to show you as you install this stuff, go to um, the nmap.org and you can download the current version of NPCAP and I'll show you how to put it in here. So you, when you go to download Nessus Essentials, up there real quick let's see it's going to basically uh, show you here all the things you can buy you say yeah i want to download that and it's going to ask you to register because you will need an activation code so if you don't register and you download it sure no problem you just won't be able to activate it so yes we are collecting your information but guess what the majority of people that are using nessus use nessus essentials it's fine yes you're going to get some stuff but look you have to opt in if you say, check to receive updates from Tenable, great, we'll talk to you. If you don't, you know, don't worry about it. You're going to get the, the registration code and everything else you can throw in the spam folder. All right. So once you install it, um, what I want you to do is you download it, you install it, you're going to see the screen at some point. At this point, what you want to do is stop. Stop the service. So whether it's in Linux or in Windows, stop the service. And then you're going to look for Win PCAP. Well, Windows is right, so it's Windows PCAP. You're not going to see it in Linux. Win PCAP. Uninstall Win PCAP. And then install um, the N PCAP. And one of the things you'll see is it has this will come up and I'll say install N PCAP with Win PCAP API compatible mode. So now you'll have the latest and greatest. When you start the Nessus service in Windows, it'll be happy, won't complain, everything will work just great. But definitely that's the one little trick. Install it, get it to that screen that says, hey, which one do you want to install? Stop there, close the screen, stop the service, uninstall WinPCAP, install NPCAP. All right. This is where we download it. You're going to get a nice email with the activation code. Got to have that. And then once you go, oh, let's go back one more time here. Okay, so the binary that you get actually can run one of four different things. In this case, obviously, Nessus Essentials, everyone will ask for an activation code. So it is exactly the same binary. So you, you go hit continue here, you put in your activation code, and then it's going to say, I'm downloading plugins, and then it's going to say, I'm compiling plugins. This is where you go away for coffee for about 20 minutes. It's going to take a while to do. So it does need to compile everything. It all depends on your bandwidth, what computer you have. It takes a little while to get it initially going. So go away, have fun, play some games, come back. One of the things that we do is we're trying to make it really, really easy for you to start using this without getting a lot of training. And so we're going to step you through some things at the beginning of it. So if you already know Nessus, like, yeah, I don't need the, the lecture here. Let me just go do my stuff. Fine. Just close it out. You can go do whatever you want. Oh, by the way, there's a little advertisement up here saying, yeah, you can save 40% if you go to check out and up, upload. So that's my sales pitch. Sorry. But you can start putting in targets here, and it will do a discovery initially. And it'll start showing you, hey, these are the ones I'm discovering. And, you know, depending on how big of a a slice you give it, it's going to take a while. The 16 IP address limitation is not applicable here. Discovery, we don't care. It's when you start looking and probing and using the plugins, that's when it's going to say something. Now, for my money, this is about the same pace as Nmap, doing an Nmap scan versus, you know, using this. You're, you're doing the same thing, so you could use Nmap, right? Once it's discovered a bunch of them, it's going to ask you, would you like to now start, you know, going and figuring out what's going on with these particular devices? Pick your 16 IP addresses that you want. Select them, run the scan, and all of a sudden you'll start seeing results. Now, this is an email that I have here, you know, stretch at Gmail if you want to get a hold of me. I'll leave it up for a moment, but I'm going to go into the actual um, Nessus right now and show you that. So, okay, here we go. 
Let's see, let me log in. Why aren't you? There we go. Love LastPass. Okay, so the screen shots I took came from this instance that I'm showing you right now. So here's my host discovery scan. Here's everything that it found. It says, hey, by the way, I saw a few ports, just to let you know, because it's using those ports as well to kind of identify the operating system, saying, hey, you know, I see some of these things here. I know that's related to Windows. So I'm going to take a guess at what some of that stuff is without having to log in. Okay, so I see all of the range that's in there. It's going to say, hey, there's a couple of vulnerabilities, but it's just giving you, hey, this is informational. That's all we're doing. Nothing big. Then I did my basic scan, and now, without even logging into the system, it's already showing me here are vulnerabilities and what's going on. So great. What do I got? I got vulnerabilities. I can list them all out here if I want. I got some remediation advice saying, hey, by the way, on this particular item, you need to upgrade. That stuff is old. Why you got that there? And you can go into it, and it can show you what's out there, like, hey, here's the vulnerability, here's critical. Here's the thing that I like. It gives you a description of what's going on. It gives you a place that if you want more information, you can go to it. It also shows you the risk factors, what CVE numbers are and stuff. Personally, my feeling about CVEs is that over 60% of them are high and critical. I don't like that, so it's not giving me necessarily as useful a piece of information as I would like to have. But for me, it, it gives me a start. I know how risky this particular system is and whether it's really on the internet or not. Uh, my favorite part is this is 3389. If you're a hacker, you will know that um, Eternal Blue will work on this. It's the, the malware from the NSA that keeps on giving. So I know that this is a very nasty thing that I need to go fix right now. So that's why we're saying it's critical. So you get all your information there and you can go through it. That's just stuff that I haven't even logged into the system. But once I start finding this and I said, look, I really want detail on this. I'm going to target a system. I'm going to have it go scan and then let it log in because now we can do all sorts of really interesting things once we go in. Uh, Microsoft Windows. First of all, I'm running a really old version of it. So, you know, if I was a consultant, the first thing I would say, um, the rest of this stuff is interesting, but bottom line, if you don't upgrade to a different operating system, none of this, none of this really matters. But your system is like so open, it's, it's not funny. You might as well just, you know, quit while you're ahead and just tell everybody, hey, come hack me. So I, of course, I've used a system that I can show a lot of, of bugs on. We give a lot of informational things, so on and so forth. So now, these are things that, my scans, how do I even run a scan? Try to get some stuff out of the way here. And yeah, I don't need to know about this, go away. If I want to run my own scan, there's host discovery, which we already showed, as you can do it as much as you want, unlimited IP addresses. Or I can go in here and start doing other types of scans. Now you will notice some of these have a banner saying upgrade. So those mean that you have to get Nessus Pro in order to do that. So we don't let you do any kind of compliance scans. We're not going to do scans of mobile devices. Yes, we do do mobile devices. You have to go buy an upgrade for that. So what I like to do is I like to use the advanced scans. Let me show you what that looks like. I give it a name, a description. Here's the folder where I want to store it. So the, the, the files that are generated, the raw files are actually very readable. You can open it up in an editor and start figuring out how to scrape it yourself. You give it the target of what you want to take a look at. And then you can go and say, look, I do want to schedule it. You can, you have a limitation here. You have, you can schedule one um, scan and that's it. And this is probably going to do as many as you want. Once it's finished, who do I want to notify? It's asking me, hey, look, you haven't configured your SMTP server. Tell me where it is so I can do this. But you can get a notification say, yeah, go run. Let me know when you're finished. And what do I want to discover? And how do I want to do it? You know, when I do initial discovery type things where I do ping, 
uh, these are all fine um, things you're using ARP or TCP or ICMP. What I would like to see this product use more is um, something uh, called HPing, if you're familiar with that. There's some better ways to do discoveries than we're doing right here, and, and I will ad admit that. And some people have told us, look, can you just give us access within here to NMAP? And no, we're not going to give that to you at this point. That They just don't want to do it. But I'm trying to make this work a little better. If you do UDP, you can take a lot of time. Um, and remember, as you do some of these, make sure you know what your remote hosts are, because if you set the wrong settings, you can effectively DDoS the system and bring it down. It's, it's a very common problem. Um, port scans, you tell it exactly what you want in range, or we have some defaults that we can do. How do you want to go doing it? Here's the SIN to do a net port scan, or you can do it other ways. We got a lot of them. I'm not going to go into too much um, stuff. The thing I want to mention here is when you go into the port scanning, depending if you're doing natting or you're having to go across a firewall to get at an endpoint can be a problem. And if it does, we have agents that you can log, you can put down locally. Again, that's the paid for version and be able to use agents to do some of these requests. Also, the services you can look for here, if you want to go through SSL, what is the assessment going to be? I'm not going to go too deep in this. Reporting, how do you want the results to come out so that you can do stuff? Do you want me to tell you stuff by their DNS names? How do you want me to, to give you that information? And then there are some advanced settings. This is where you start getting into how do I tune the scans so that I make sure that I'm not going to DDoS somebody. So how many simultaneous ones I'm going to do, I don't want to be a bother to my network. Again, time uh, for that would be another day if you want to get into the, the deep dive of messes. We do credentials, of course. So you can go in and say, OK, give me you know, what Windows credentials you have, how you want me to log in. Now I can go in and do a really very deep dive in to see what vulnerabilities are there. And we have all sorts of different ways of doing it. So a lot of stuff there. Plugins, here we go. So let's look at this. There's a ton of plugins out there. And you're going to look at it and say, well, wait a minute. I'm only going to do Windows devices. But you got CentOS and stuff. Do I really have to go in here and select and unselect which plugins? No, you don't. When it identifies what the host is and what type of host it is, it says, look, this is a Windows. 10 box. Uh, the Amazon Linux stuff doesn't apply. I'm not going to run it. So it is smart enough to know what is applicable based on how well it can tell what the operating system is, and it will apply plugins as needed. You, of course, can go in and say, look, um, I know that I'm going to go do Windows, and there's a bunch of them here, but you know what? I only need a few of them, and I don't need to do everything. So I can select, look, only do the user management part of the Windows uh, plugins, and that's it. So you, you can be as specific as you want. You can say, look, you, you drive. I want to go in automatic. Fine, no problem. So that's how you set up an initial scan there. And let me show you. That's just one template. The advanced dynamic scan is saying, hey, listen, guys. Um, I want to do everything, but I want to also focus on there's a new CV out there today. I don't know what plugins that are applicable to that. I'm going to give you a CVE. You figure it out. Go scan and tell me what the results are. So it's, it's very nice for you to do that. And of course, we go, it's not just CVEs, but it's a whole bunch of uh, different here. Cert, um, Elliot, which I, I never, honestly, I've never even heard of this one, Elliot uh, Exploit Framework. So there's a lot of things we track that you can go in there and put in. Um, also, you can put in advanced stuff like if you want to go do Yara rules as part of the assessment, you can add them in there if you want to look for hashes or file. Like, let's say you know that here's a hash of a piece of malware that just came out. Please go scan everybody to see if this file exists. You can do that. So we, we have a lot of things you can do, even with Nest with Essentials. There are things called policies where you can create custom templates so that when you're scanning, you can, you know, if you're going to do something over and over again with a scan template, 
You can create your own policies of how you want it to run. Plugin rules will say, look, you come and you tell me that this thing is very high and critical, but for me it isn't. So I want to recast that as being low threat to me, not a high threat. So as you go run your scans over and over and you keep on seeing something coming up and saying, hey, listen, this is a high threat. It's like, no, dude, that, that, it's, it's internal. It doesn't talk to the internet. I consider it low. So just every time you see that, just set it low for me. I don't want to deal with you again. So there's ways to, to make it easier for you to keep on running these without having to go through every little scan option and set it each time. Okay, we're coming up. Uh, close to the top of the hour here. I want to make sure there's time for questions. So let me break it off at this point. What questions does anybody have? And, and just come on up and ask them. I'll try like, what's that, the chat? Uh, yeah. Hi, Eric. Can you hear me? Yeah, please. So it's kind of pretty cool, though, what you explained, especially in the credentials. I know there's like product key, there's API key, and linking key. Can you elaborate the difference between the three and how they would be used in this context here? Because I think an Tenable has those right around when you start to do. Okay, let me make sure I got this right. So let's, we're going in here. Uh -huh. This is the keys you're talking about or are you talking about a different one? Because when you say API, I'm thinking something else. Yeah, there's an API key, there's a linking key. I kind of noticed them around when I was doing this like last year or something. Yep, IBM Data Power Gateway. They use an API gateway to do their stuff that's yeah. specific to that. Uh, cloud services, hey, there's Amazon, your favorite buddies, uh, mm -hmm. Azure, Office, Rackspace. So they have their own way of logging in, and we had to do some stuff to support that. So that's what these different keys are. So Monk mm -hmm. Data, you know, DB, how do you log in with that? Well, we have to do it a little bit differently. So we just give you that option. Yeah, OK. And then your good old FTP. If you're using FTP, let me know because I want to come in and uh, try out a few things on you. Got it, yeah. When I set up my um, Tenable to, you know, Tenable was running on EC2 instances, you know, of course, you have to connect Tenable with AWS, right? I think there the DevOps were using linking keys. I kind of really didn't understand that infrastructure architecture because I wasn't there when it was set up from get going. So I kind of always wondering about what that linking keys was that. And I think the moment you change linking keys or break them, it disconnects the tenable in the AWS environment. So I don't know if that helps. Yeah, you know, I'm sorry. I don't know enough about the AWS one specifically. But okay. here is oh, there you go. access key. Yeah. Here's your yeah, secret. Mm -hmm. Regions to access. Mm -hmm. What would be the difference be there between access ID key and access key? I honestly don't know. I, I just know that when I did the VPNs a long time ago, when I had to do, you had a VPN into there, I had to have those too. You set up the keys, they'd say, Here, here's your stuff. Remember it, otherwise we're not gonna tell you again. And then this is where I would you know, go put them in. So to me, it's like a username, password. Okay, cool. Right, fair enough, but that's good. Thank you though. Awesome. Any other questions? By the way, I saw somebody say, go to eBay to find Palo Alto Networks Unified Threat Management Box. Uh, be very leery of buying anything off of eBay because you never know if it's uh, something that they'll say basically, hey, you want support on this? Uh, we noticed that that thing is out of support or somebody used it as a demo box and it is not for resale. You can get screwed on eBay on doing that. But go to that virtual graffiti. They, they sell Palo Alto as well under one of their other names. But back to Nessus. Uh, I'm also curious if there are other things you would like to see in maybe a deep dive of Nessus Pro for another time. Uh, I'm happy to to bring some people on and we can we can go into, you know, how would you do red teaming uh, or blue teaming? We use this for red teaming um, at uh, the Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition. Uh, some people use OpenVAS, but this is much more uh, in-depth. So it's great for figuring out what the blue team has and where I can go nail them. The great subject for um, for future presentations, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Just let me know, and I'm happy to bring on whoever I can. If you want to meet Renault, I can ask him if he would be willing to do that and see if he's up for it, and uh, you can meet the inventor of it. Awesome. Yeah. 
Eric, on this, uh, um, the family of nurses, I know the the hierarchy umbrella is like this tenable, of course, owns nurses, but then on the tenable side, you know, in which I don't know where nurses would fit in, you have two things, right? You have tenable IO, which is a cloud, and then you have security center, which is the, the on-prem environment, right? And then nurses runs on both. Can you can you help understand the uh, the product or so-called hierarchy infrastructure, like you, if you if you don't mind? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm actually one of the product managers for Security Center. Sweet. And so it's all the on-prem stuff. So yeah, say here we are saying we're number one in management. This is where I just told you, like, yeah, big deal, right? If you tell that to, if a note comes on and you say that, that Eric said it's not a big deal, you're gonna get me fired. I'm coming after you. So don't do it. <laughs> no problem, promise you. We're number one. <laughs> <laughs> so, good. Uh, Nessus is the foundation. It's the one that goes and does the scanning, figures out the vulnerabilities, creates all the reports and data. Uh, Security Center takes it in and gives you reporting and management of multiple scanners. So like if you have a quarter million endpoints, you're not going to use one Nessus Pro. Uh, even though it can do um, a lot, it can't scale up that. You have to have multiple scanners. So SC is a way to manage it centrally and take in the reports, consolidate them, give you whatever information you need. IO is specific to the cloud. So what it's saying, hey, look, I want to throw everything to the cloud. I don't want to have it on-prem. You can still run your on-prem scan. So Nessus is sitting on-prem somewhere. IO can manage them through a VPN and you just bring everything up into the cloud because a lot of people like having stuff in the cloud. Um, so those are the key ones. At one point, they were gonna get rid of Security Center and there was such a backlash, it wasn't funny. So um, that's one of the reasons I got hired is to fill in the void of, of some of the product managers who left. The other thing we're doing is uh, Lumen, which is more of a product that goes into how to calculate risk. We have some of our own proprietary stuff. I won't go too much into it, but basically, if you're interested in learning how to better gauge risk, Lumen is a new product that we're pushing. Um, OT, um, operational technology, Internet of Things, this is where you get your SCADA and your manufacturing type um, controls. It goes in there. It's a company we bought called Indigy that's out of Israel. Really, really good. Um, if you're into that kind of thing, take a look at it. And then we show these other components, like specialized components of IO, like web application scanning, container security, if you're into that, PCI ASV, which is for people who are specific, hey, I just want to do PCI type compliance. We've got like little modules that you can add on into that. But everything comes from Nessus. That's the core to everything we do. Everything else helps you manage it and make it more usable. Got it. It's like the more underlying engine, right? That's the, the dirty, that's, ah, that, yeah. that's the dirty one. This is, this is the engine and this is the car that we put it in. This could be a forklift. Oh. This one here could be, you know, the uh, 747. Interesting. Cool. All right, so we're coming up to the top of the hour, Rod. Oh, if somebody says, if you go to, to virtualgraffiti.com, it'll it'll show you all the other companies that are under it. And so here's all the solutions they have. Just you pick one right here. So like Palo Alto, where is Palo Alto? Got it. Um, and this virtual graffiti, what they do is they discount the price. Then what the real company is selling at their uh, MSR. MSRV, whatever, MSRP? Yeah, here's Palo Alto Networks and it's uh, Palo Guard. Oh, is that one? So if you want to go see what they've got and what prices they got, you can go here, pick what you want, and they'll say, This is our great price. Buy it now. And, um, you yeah, know, it's, it's a good way to check prices. Thank you. Great, Eric. Thank you very much. Um, any other questions? Uh, specifically, do Nessus essential? 
I'm sure we'll have Eric again and uh, with uh, some other topic. Uh, thank you very much again. I know this is a lot of time. It's been over two hours you're speaking, so I'm sure you are ready to enjoy your weekend. And uh, so again, thank you very much. And thanks uh, to all of you that show up today. Uh, we will be uh, posting soon the next meeting. I think the next meeting was about DEFCO, uh, but obviously there's not going to be DEFCO, so we're, we're going to change the subject. We'll soon announce the the new subject. Uh, we'll probably have another community-driven vendor, security vendor as well, and hopefully you all of you can get to uh, uh, try it and use it. So uh, if there's any other questions, please let me know now. If not, uh, we will see you soon. Yep, and please give me feedback. I, I don't care if you, you hated me, loved me, or whatever. I love to hear how I can improve these because I want to make sure that I'm not boring you guys and such. And if there's something I can do to improve it, I really would like to learn. Rod, thank you so much for doing this, man. Much appreciate out of your weekend, you know, taking time. And Eric, I think you nailed it. You did everything 100% perfect. I don't think you need to change. From, from my experience point of view, you delivered amazing information. Is that being recorded now, please? Because I got to send it to my boss. <laughs> I'm stop. I'm stop yet. <laughs> I'm stop yet. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Eric, really appreciate it. Uh, it was awesome. Uh, great experience. And yeah, we definitely look forward to to see what, you know, uh, we can do a presentation on the red team or blue team stuff that actually will, or even purple stuff. I mean, uh, now that purple is, you know, uh, very, marketable now so maybe come up with a purple uh nexus purple presentation something like that that'll be interesting sounds great yep. all right guys we'll see you later see you soon thank you bye thank you all